Hello, my name is Scott Monahan. I'm the director of Anchorage. Hello, my name is Dakota Losham, screenwriter of Anchorage. And we're going to answer some questions out of this gumball machine. Yeah. What do we got here? What is the connection between the Bible and drugs? <laughs> well, there's um, in a lot of uh, American folk songs, they talk about a Bible on the dash. Uh, and it is a way, if you were doing something illicit, if you were speeding, if you were driving too fast, or maybe running drugs, if you have a Bible on your dashboard and you get pulled over, maybe the cop says, ah, they're just some good Christian boys, good boys caught up know. in a little bit of sin, yeah. and the Lord will save them, and we can send them on their way. Um, but also, it is part of the dichotomy of religion in America, and a country founded on Christianity and the Bible, yeah. and inside of it, such uh, the American dream. And, and corporate greed and pharmaceutical yeah, and like we're the only country where a song like one toke over the line sweet jesus one toke over the line that's an american song you know you get high off god the same way you get high off pharmaceutical we're an american band okay let's do another one well this looks like a toy or something what is this is it a tattoo hold on get the front get door the shut old here. Sh Whoa, wow. Egyptian at the discotheque tonight. Oh, no, you could. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does work. All right. What is the Florida legend? And how did you find out about it? So I had family living in Florida in the 2000s, and that's when the opioid boom happened because 85% of America's opioids- The entire nation. Was prescribed through the state of Florida. With no regulation. So no, so you could go there and it would be a drug runner's El Dorado. You can get pills for so cheap, and if you could take them up the state or you could take them even farther, then you could make a, a lot of money off of it. Like that was the idea. Now John tells Jacob in the movie that you could sell a pill for two Two hundred and fifty dollars a pill, and even Jacob is like two fifty. Who the is gonna buy a pill for two fifty? You know what I, I mean? Believe in the dream. Believe in the dream, bro. Because if you believe in the dream, like I believe in the dream, buddy, you're a millionaire. You don't even know it. Yeah. Okay. Can you repeat the German rhyme? Okay, I'll do it the best I can, but I have to tell you, I, I learned this uh, from my father, who learned it from his first wife when he first came to visit Munich. So it's a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy, but it goes, Eine kleine Pietmaus ging zum Rathaus, und der sich verskaufen, hat sich verlaufen. Sitzt da in der grüne Gras und pischt der ganze Haus los. Which means? Uh, yeah, one little peat mouse wanted to buy something, so he went to City Hall, but he got lost, so instead he sat in the green grass and completely pissed his pants. Is that true? Uh, we'll never know. That's what we think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so do you eat it? Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. Who put that there? The Olds Oldenburg beer. Uh, you have one too many, and you can have too many more. <laughs> <laughs> How did the two of you get along as actors and directors in the movie? Right, so you're the director. I was the screenwriter. We were both actors, so you have to divide some some duties and such. Yeah, and uh, I, I think that um, we we work together so much in theater that we are able to uh, to multitask in some ways of, of understanding, um, giving each other space as performers to be and fully embody the character and to give each other their, their moment to shine and uh, truly felt like a sparring match between yeah. Dakota is such Frazier and Ali, the rumble in the jungle. Yeah. He's such an incredible actor. He's yeah. such an incredible actor. Thank you so much. And he would do his take and I it was me next and I would say, okay. Um, but we also brought an associate director, her name is Meredith Trinan, and she would watch uh, my performances and Dakota's to to make sure that there was nothing that we were missing since we were covering so many roles. And she saved this uh, the film uh, you know, in many ways of being there to help us uh, help us be able to fill multiple roles 
calls at the same time. And yeah, and because it was such a small crew, you know, five days of shooting with 10 people every and shooting chronologically, everyone was on the same page and everyone helped out. We all kind of kept track of what was going on. So it was because of our community that it was able to work. But we get along great. Yeah, yeah. Reading lines with you and you're like, you would say your line and then you're like, blah, 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 my line, blah, 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 blah. And that's how I work, we're running scenes. Are you gonna try another one? <laughs> Are you planning a second film? Wonderful question. Wow. What to, do you think? Uh, I, well, the question is together or separately? I mean, yeah. you're, we're not sure. I, I think Dakota and I love working together so much. There's, uh, we have a lot of ideas. We have a lot of um, projects that we're working on, uh, developing and, and um, seeing what happens with this movie. Um, your support as audience in this film festival in Oldenburg and the, the international support, uh, it is a huge thing for independent filmmakers to share and spread the word because it makes it possible for us to make another film. Yeah, come see our screening. We're playing Friday at 7 p.m. Friday at 7. Saturday at 4.30. Saturday at 4.30. Check out Oldenburg for we're, more info. We're going to be at both doing a Q&A afterwards live with you, the audience. Thank you for being there. Invite your friends. Bring your mom. Bring your grandma. Bring your grandpappy. Bring your cat if that's allowed because you know what? Rules are for dogs. That's right.